I think all in all we see uh, the, the improving macro conditions. Therefore, uh, uh, we need to take all the macro conditions together and, and look at uh, the, the developments and not simply one or two variables in isolation. Thank you, Mr. Uh, can I take another question? There's any? Yes. Yes, yes, Dinesh. Why is it that SMP rates Sri Lanka so poorly on political I personally believe we have a very stable and strong government. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, first of all, I'm not a sovereign analyst. Uh, and uh, that is something. I urge you to have a look at the rationale for that, and I, I think, pardon? No, I think uh, it's uh, the stability of the whole lot of political institutions and the dispersion of power and so on. So there are a number of factors there. I'm not saying it be rated poorly, we just see that as a risk. Yeah, it is right. That means it's a risk. It's a risk. I, I, I think you can see it for yourself. I, I leave it to my panel to answer that who are better experts in the Sri Lankan <laughs> political situation than I am. Thank you. Can I have a, one last question in the interest of time because Mr. Dira Singh has to go? Hello. Yeah. Hello. My knowledge in economic is very poor, so please pardon yes. me if my Can questions you? are wrong. One, now you are talking about increase in export. What do you think, sir? It must be discounted with increase in import also. But the idea of posting saying that export had increased without giving the figure for import. Similarly, we are saying that we have increased foreign reserves. Is it based on borrowings? What do you think, so increase in foreign reserves should be discounted against increasing borrowings? Third one, now admit the interest rates are low, but India recently, economic, they said, now they are facing a deflation situation. Where loans are available, there are no takers. So don't you think that that situation will come to Sri Lanka unless you rectify the situation? Fourth is very important, that since the interest rates are low, what about the people who are depending on fixed income? Now everybody grumbles that they are getting from the treasury bill only 7%, which they can't afford. And knowing very well that our average age rate is very high, what do you think so that in a way can you are undermining them? Okay, can I? Okay, I think uh, just to recap your question, it is between the difference between imports and exports, is it? Okay, can I ask from the export sector? If you the, so your question is why they are increasing, uh, we are concentrating on exports, but uh, why not we are concentrating on imports? Is that the question? When you are saying, when you are, I would say both things, when you are happy that exports are increasing, why can't you give the figure about the import also and discount it whether it's actually cropped? Okay. okay. Otherwise, I'll if you are saying only export, that means you are slowly hiding the fact okay. about increasing import. Okay, I did. Okay. But, but you are saying this, okay, why only talk about export increase, why not talk about the import increase also? Okay. Uh, Remarks that I was supposed to make, and I, you want me to speak on the economy of Sri Lanka. I, I can speak for hours and hours. You might uh, not stay here, some of you might uh, go back. So I don't want to make it so bitter. So if I may say about uh, import growth, import growth is good for the country. Imports are also growing. Last year, import growth was about 34 percent. And uh, if you look at the import composition, um, um, our consumption goods imports is about 20% or less. And other imports are investment goods and uh, intermediate goods. About 80% of our imports are development related imports. And we have seen a lot of uh, uh, imports uh, related to the garment industry and other industries. And that is a good sign because uh, the, those industries are growing. And we have seen in that export growth uh, there is import inputs, so those those are good 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 developments in the economy, 
and uh, uh, we, we will see uh, import growth uh, in the future as well. But uh, I was just uh, giving an example about uh, the, the export growth. In January, the exports have grown by 72%, whereas the import growth was less than 25% with those high prices of oil. Uh, naturally, we will have problems with uh, high oil prices, but uh, we will manage because our trade deficit is narrowing down as a result of high export growth and low import growth. Uh, Thank you. Uh, well, uh, one thing I would like to say is the whole world today, has, the trade has turned topsy turned because the China is maintaining their the value of the currency pretty low. Right? Now that is causing an imbalance all over. Now in order to counteract that, what the USA is doing is they are having this quantitative easing. They are pumping in billions of dollars to their economy to keep their currency low, right? In relation to other, other countries' currencies. So because all are trying to boost their exports, because I know the exports are the, the thing that is needed to drive the growth of any economy. That is what we also should strive. But unfortunately, if our currency rupee is, if it is appreciating due to fundamentals taking place, then it's all right. But there is a little bit of danger because of this quantitative easing which is going on in the, in the USA. This money is coming into our regions, as Surinder very rightly said, we call it hot money, which can go back as fast as they could. But if our rupee is appreciating due to hot money flowing in, then there is a bit of danger. But if the central bank has not intervened, our rupee today would have flagged around 105, 104 today. But they are keeping it uh, controlled. But I don't know whether it is still enough. Because it is very difficult to compete with countries like China. When the Chinese exporter gets more yuan in, comparit in comparative terms to Sri Lankan exporter, then the playing fields are not level. So we have a problem. And I think Central Bank is certainly looking at it because if that happens, then we have to take drastic measures to keep the rupee at the right level. Because we have to, only thing is, although our exports have gone up in January, still our exports account to only 18% of the GDP, whereas in China, in uh, it, amounts about 35 percent. So I think we should, we should double, the president said that we should double the GDP per capita in five years, the same way it should say that we should double our exports also in five years. So that is where we should uh, sort of uh, strive at. Thank you. Okay, just, I think uh, I, I have one, one more point just to uh, complement what uh, Mr. Javadat said. Uh, with regard to uh, the inflows, and the word was uh, mentioned here that uh, we have uh, hot money coming into the country. And in uh, Mr. Kapadia's presentation, he gave some uh, measures that uh, other countries have taken to limit the inflows into their countries. We have a very effective measure we have taken, which was not mentioned in the presentation, uh, which is the cap we have on foreign investment on treasury bills and treasury bonds. We have a cap of 10%. It is the 10% uh, of the treasury bills and treasury bonds outstanding at any given point of time can be sold to the foreigners. So that way we have stopped the hot money coming into the country. And we, we have our experience having uh, inflows like that uh, uh, during the crisis time. And we manage the crisis. We have, I mean, crisis, we, no one can prevent the crisis from happening. But the main point is that we must be in a position to foresee the crisis and manage it. So we manage the crisis. Uh, now we are back in very much uh, in, in, uh, in strong fundamentals in the economy today.
Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I would now like to cordially invite Professor Vadavala uh, to hand over a token of appreciation to our guest speaker this morning, Mr. Surinder Katpalya. Thank you, gentlemen. I'd now like to call upon Chairman of Ram Holdings, Tansri Seri Siti Norma Yakub, to hand over tokens of appreciation. To Professor Lakshman Watavala. Professor Vatwale. Mr. Deera Singh, huh? And finally, Mr. Preeti Jayawardena. Thank you, ma'am. I'd now like to cordially invite the Deputy Chairman of Ram Holdings, Tansri Datuk Sri Rajendram. Yes. Um, he will hand a token of appreciation to Mr. Krishan Balendra. And Mr. Adrian Pereira. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of today's program. I hope you have had an insightful day. Uh, thank you again, and have a pleasant day ahead. Uh, I have a small uh, announcement to make. Can I kindly invite the chairman of uh, uh, Ram Holdings, Tanzania City, Mumbai?